Hey friends, we're back with my Voron Unit 3. It is a Voron 0.2 that we built uh, from an LDO kit. There's been a whole series, and in the last episode, we finally finished, completed the whole thing, closed it up. It's looking really good. I've been, in the meantime, since then, running through some test prints. I've got a bunch of cubes and some other things here as well. We'll, we'll talk about all of the calibration procedures that I've gone through and all of that stuff in a future video. I've also built this cool little thing. It's a belt tension uh, sort of meter tester. And uh, the preliminary results from testing this thing out have been really, really good. So we'll probably make a video in the series on this tool as well at some point in the future. But for today, um, maybe a bit more of a dry topic, but I think it's important. I've gone through and uh, for the clipper configuration for this printer, I took the LDO file that they provided for us as a baseline for the configuration and I've completely sort of uh, reorganized it to make it easier for us as we go forward in the series and make other modifications and start doing some tuning on this printer to be able to find things easily in the config and make changes and that sort of thing. So in today's episode I wanted to go through the changes that I've made, kind of the, the overall organizational idea that I have behind the configuration files, and then I'll also share all of those uh, on my GitHub account. I'll put the link down in the description of this video, so if you're curious about my approach to Clipper configuration on a small printer like this, that'll be uh, what you can find out about in this episode. So let's get started. All right, so to get us started, I wanted to kind of remind us all where we started with with this printer config, right? So this is the file that we originally downloaded from LDO's GitHub repository. They linked to this from the build guide and when we were going through and installing the software and getting everything set up with Clipper on the printer, this is what we originally downloaded and started with. And it's a decent file, right? It has good comments in here to remind you of changes that you're gonna have to make to make it work with your printer. And it's got links to other Clipper and Voron guides that are useful to look at as well. So that's, that's all really good and I think the only really big issue that I have with this, and this I think happens with a lot of Clipper config files over time, is that it's just kind of long and disorganized, right? So we can scroll through here and we can find everything that we want to be able to change potentially, but it, you know, without taking a lot of time to kind of read through and figure stuff out, it's a bit hard sometimes to find what you're looking for. And so what I've decided to do with my setup is to break this thing up into a bunch of different files and just include them from our main, main printer config. So if we look here, uh, this GitHub repository here, which I will link to down in the description of this video if you're curious to check it out, and I value your comments on this as well. So if you have thoughts on this as we're going through, leave them in the comments here or you know leave a comment over on the GitHub repo and um, let me know what you think because I, this is going to evolve over time, but this is kind of my initial idea for how I'd like to handle this. Uh, we still have our main printer config file, right? But if we look at this thing, all it becomes is a list of includes. And the order of these are, is important because some of them override settings that were you know, originally defined in the ones previous. And so order matters, but other than that, this is just basically a catalog of all of our config files that are hopefully categorized in a way that we can easily find what we're looking for if we want to make a change to a specific, you know, setting related to a specific part of the printer's operation. And so what we have is, you know, these three includes up here at the top are for our control board, our SKR Pico, then our Pico Bilical breakout board, that LDO provided in the kit that talks to our tool head and then our Raspberry Pi. And so those are probably not likely to be changed that often. They're just basically the, you know, what sensors and motors are plugged into which pins on the board and all of those kinds of things are in those files. And then down here, we have includes for all of the files that control the operation of the printer. Right, so this is basic settings. And then this is all the config that goes with our main sale web UI. That file was actually provided by Mainsail when we did that install. We're using the CAMP plugin, a Clipper adapt Adaptive Meshing and Purging. Again, I'll link that down in the description of this video because I think it's a really useful plugin to use. <laughs> We're actually only using it for its purge line in this case because our Voron V0 doesn't need a lot of adaptive meshing type of functionality. It, it can't use it, right, because there's no probe on the, on the print head. But I'm using that extra plugin, that third party thing, so um, I'll, I'll make sure to link to that down in the description and you can go read about that if you're interested. And then I've got some settings related to homing, some setting, settings related to filament, loading and unloading and the filament sensor, that kind of thing. Some 
settings for our LEDs, and then just generic macros like uh, print start, print end, and other related things like that. And so all of those just get loaded in here in one place. And then if we want to go and change settings related to a specific part of the printer, it, it's easier for us, I, th I think, to be able to go and find the correct file that we're after and then go look in there. And so, for example, if we start with our control board, I mentioned that earlier. Um, if you're you know, cloning this repository and using it for yourself, obviously you'll have to change these USB IDs here based on where you're Raspberry Pi is finding your uh, these devices on on you know its USB bus, uh, but other than that, the rest of this is if if you followed the LDO build guide and you're using the same kit as me, the rest of this shouldn't have to change, right? And so it's got you know stepper motor stuff, it's got extruder stuff, the bed heater, and then the fans, and that's it, right? So there's no macros or other things like that in this particular file. It's just settings for all of the components that are plugged into this SK, SKR Pico board. And then, you know, likewise, we've got the same thing for the Pico Bilical and the Raspberry Pi. So we don't probably need to look at those here. And then, you know, some of these other files, we'll look at the homing one as an example. This has all of the settings related to sensorless homing in this case, because that's what this printer uses. And so first section here is overrides for some of our config values. So these were things in the stepper X and stepper Y blocks that were already defined in our SKR Pico config but we need to override them to do sensorless homing. And so we do those here. And again, that's why the order that these files are included in your main printer config is important, right? You want this to come after, so we'll override those, those values. And so we override some config values, and then we set up all of our macros to be able to do our homing. Um, and again, most of this came from, I didn't write this, most of this came from the uh, default LDO printer config that already you know, that we already had. I've just reorganized it to make it easier to find. And then down below those homing override macros, we have some additional macros to help us like move the print head to the center or the front of the print area, that sort of thing. So everything related to homing and movement is all in this one file. And now if we have a, a problem in the future or we wanna make a change to like how fast the homing works or different things like that, we can go in this one file and we know really you know quickly where to find things. So that's how all of those different files work. Um, there is a filament config here. I will mention this in this video. We're not gonna look at this because this is still kind of a work in progress for me. I have, a, a, I think, a very nice idea of how I want to do filament unload, load, and swap. And so I've started the macros portion of that endeavor, and those are here in this config file already. But there's a hardware mod that I wanna make that will tie it all together, and so in a future video of this series, we will talk about filament load and unload. But if you're curious and you wanna look at what I've got cooking, um, you can look in that config file and take a, take a guess at to, as to what I might be up to uh, related to that. So yeah, I think that's a pretty good overview of how these files work. Again, if you have comments or suggestions related to this organizational sort of tactic, uh, let me know. I'm, I'm curious to see what you think or to see other uh, examples. If you've got a link to somebody else's config that you think is, is especially good, let me know that too, because this will be a work in progress as I go through and kind of organize everything. And some of this I might tie back into my bigger Voron, my 2.4, at some point in the future. I, I've really wanted for a long time to re, uh, rearrange its configuration to make it easier to work with. And so if I like kind of how this is working, I will probably go back and do that one as well. So there might be a second repository pretty soon here on my GitHub account that's got the config that I use for my Voron 2.4 as well. Besides that, in this video, the other thing I wanted to show you guys is uh, just some changes that I've made over here in the mainsail UI to sort of clean things up just a little bit. There's two main things that I've done. The first is related to macros, right? So throughout all of these configuration files over here, we have various macros that get defined. And not all of them necessarily do you want to have showing up here in your mainsail UI to be able to call them. So I already have this in place, but let's go and undo this real quick. So if we go in our uh, UI config here and we go under the macros section, you can change the management of macros from simple to expert. So if I change it back to simple real quick here, you can see that what this does by default. And so if you haven't made any changes in mainsail, this is what you'll see. You get this macros block here with buttons and it just loads in every single macro that you have defined anywhere in your config. 
And so we have things in here like all of these ones to turn the logo to different colors, the little logo that's on the front of the Kirigami bed. And I don't necessarily want these in my mainsail UI, right? Because I don't want to be able to push a button and turn the logo to green. I mean, I can, right? So if I click this here, and then we get you guys a view of the printer real quick, you'll see that the, uh, the logo changed to green, right? And then I can change it to purple, and then I can change it to red. That, those types of things work, uh, but having them here in our UI is kind of unnecessary, I think. And so what I did was I went into that config again under macros here, and you can change it from simple to expert, and then you can create groups. And so um, all you do here is you, set, you hit add group, you give the group a name, and um, then you can choose which macros out of the entire list that you want to include in that group, right? So if we just create a group for a second here called test, you can give it a color. You can also choose whether that group shows up when the printer is in standby, when the printer is paused, and when it's printing. So sometimes it makes sense to only have a group show up like while the printer's printing and the rest of the time not. Um, you can do that here by just toggling these on and off. And then you can choose which, uh, you know, which macros you want to include in it. So we'll just put those two in there for now. And if we close this, now we have our test group. And if we go look over here, you'll see that we have a test group here with those two macros that we just put in place. And so what I've done is I've created a group for filament management, a group for motion, which is just move the print head to certain locations. And then this print management group actually has um, some macros in it that came with the LDO uh, default config. I haven't used them yet, but if you want to set a pause at specific layers or at the next layer, you can do those with this. And so that group is set to only show up when the printer's printing, which is why we don't see it here right now. So that's a good trick to use so that as you start to add more and more macros into your config, you don't have to clutter up your mainsail UI with them over here. Um, the other thing that I've done is I've added a, a filter in my console here, and we can see that again up here in our settings. If we go to console, it gives you this option to add different filters in here. And I added this filter called run current. I'll remove it real quick so that you can see why I added it, right? So if I go and I start to home my printer now, so I'll hit home all. And you can see there the printer starting to home. So as soon as here it moves, starts moving the X and Y axes, um, what was happening was over here in my console, it spits out all of these little messages that tell me that it's changing the run current. Now that is part of our homing macro, right? If you go over here and you look um, down here, like when we start to home X, you can see that it's actually setting the run current on our stepper motor for X to a specific value. And that's important for the sensorless homing to work correctly. Uh, but the problem that I had with it is I just didn't like all of these log messages coming out over here in my console in my UI here. And you can see in our macro here, there's nothing specifically that's printing those out. Clipper's just doing it. Um, and so I did a bit of research and I discovered that there's not an easy way to turn that off to tell Clipper not to spit out those log messages there. And so then the way to solve that is just to go here under the console settings and add a filter. Um, and you can call it whatever you want. Um, but what this wants is a regular expression. Um, so anything that matches here, with the, with the words run current in it will then be filtered out. So if I do this and I say run current, then all lines that have run current in them, and I could modify that regex to just be lines that start with run current, but this is fine. So if I like clear out the console and I hit uh, the home all again, so now we see our printer homing. And when the X and Y axes start to move, I'll swap back. So it's just hitting the bottom of the Z now. Yeah, so now the X and Y are starting to move and you'll see here in our console, we don't get those run current messages popping out anymore. So if you do see Clipper logging certain things in your console or there's just stuff that you don't wanna see, adding those filters here under the console section of the interface settings is a good way to do that. Um, so again, those were just two things to clean up my mainsail UI. Um, to make it easier for, for to operate things, and especially because I've built the version of the printer that doesn't have a screen on it, it's on it of its own, 
I'm always using this main sale UI to uh, you know manage that printer while it's working. I think having a nice clean UI here is is especially helpful, and especially because I want to bring this up on my phone sometimes, um, and so I don't want it cluttered up with a bunch of extra stuff. And so um, I think that's the end of this quick discussion of my config changes and how I've you know decided to arrange all of this stuff. Again, if you have thoughts or comments, definitely let me know. Um, and if you're watching this in the future, far in the future from when this video came out, you might go to this repository and see that it looks quite a bit different from what I'm showing now. Uh, but I think the, the basic concepts will stay the same, that we have our main printer config and it is including all of these other files that are hopefully organized in a way that makes it easier for us to find specific settings when we wanna go change and tweak and modify things. And so with that in place, um, this is the config that I'll be using at least for now going forward with the printer. And now in future episodes of this series, we are gonna go ahead and start working on uh, updating this config, making some changes. We're gonna do a couple of hardware mods as well that I already have in mind. And then we're gonna work on tuning this printer up to try to get the highest quality possible that we can out of the prints that come out of this thing. And so I'm looking forward to that. If you are new and you haven't subscribed or you know aren't following along with the series yet, um, go check out the playlist. It's pretty long at this point and continuing to grow uh, with more episodes, not just on the build of this printer, but now we're gonna get into the tuning and doing some real printing with it as well. And so I look forward to those things. I hope to see you for those episodes coming up in the next few days and weeks. And until then, I hope you have a good day and I'll see you later.